Let's look at some high dividend yield ETFs. To do this, we go to the website justetf.com, go to select columns from the screener, select either dividend yield current or one year, and then we just sort on the dividend yield. And here we've got the highest yielding ones and start our analysis. Another great feature of the Just ETF website is its charting capabilities. So here we've got our UKD, five year returns. This time it's including dividends and it's pretty much flat over five years. And then I can also take out the dividends if I like. Now I'm down 24%. So that's essentially been the cumulative dividends that would have been received. So it's a really clear way to see how dividend focused ETFs perform. So first up, we've got Global X Super Dividend, ticker is SDIP. This has a whopping yield of 12.64%. Dividends are paid monthly. Oh my God, what could possibly go wrong? Well, clearly quite a lot, as we'll see. It's got around about 100 holdings, equally weighted. Charges are about 0.58%. The top sector is mortgage REITs so it's always kind of like mortgage debt um, so subprime crisis here we come then it's got energy materials etc uh, most of the mortgage REITs are in the US um, and then we've also got large weightings to Brazil Australia and what it calls Britain is at three percent then here's the longer term price performance of the Global X super dividend and you can see that over five years, the price has really collapsed from nearly $60 down to 21. And it's a, just a fairly recent listing on the US, UK stock exchange. So the problem with this one is that although it pays a high dividend, the um, price performance is terrible and you need to really stay clear of this one. Next, we've got HSBC Brazil. Uh, largest sector is financials, then energy and materials. Uh, and we've got some of the top 10 holdings here, quite concentrated around Petrobras and Vale. Uh, whopping yield at 9.96%. Let's see how this one does. Here's the chart of HBRL. Including dividends, it's not too bad with some clear higher lows going on. But if you take the dividends out, I think the performance is very lackluster. And so when you look at your account statement, you won't see um, amazing numbers for this ETF. Now we've got iShares Emerging Markets Dividend, SEDY, yield 9.16%, about 100 holdings equally weighted, charge is 0.65%. Our friend Brazil is there, as is China, Taiwan, India, and again, some quite similar sectors like materials, energy, financials. P ratio is a tiny 4.9%. Price to book is below one. So looks more diversified than Brazil, potentially more interesting. For emerging markets, the chart is negative, including dividends over five years. It had done quite well until the end of 2021. But then I think it's the China effect that sent it falling down. So although it's more diversified than Brazil, I'm still not currently massively keen on it. Now we've got the X Trackers Stocks Global Select Dividend 100 XGSD yield 7.49%. Tries to get the highest dividend paying stocks weighted by annual net dividend, largest component cap to 10%, excludes emerging markets, fees 0.5%. And we've got the sectors and the country split there. So it doesn't look too bad so far. Including dividends, the five year performance is reasonable at nearly 20%. If we exclude the dividends, it doesn't look so good, um, but still may be worthy of further consideration. iShares Asia Pacific Dividend, IAPD. It's got Australia, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, New Zealand, 50 holdings, 7.32% yield, charges 0.59%, and we've got the sector split there. PE ratio only 6.56 and price to book 0.82. So it looks like good value in a potentially interesting geographic area. IAPD has just about turned in a positive performance over five years. If you include the dividends, 
it might be due some kind of resurgence in price. You never know, uh, but unfortunately, excluding the dividends, it's quite a horrible negative 21% over five years. This is Wisdom Tree Europe Equity Income ticker EEI, yielding 6%. The weightings are according to the dividend that's paid rather than the market cap. P is 0.29%. Um, UK is the number one holding. So maybe if you like the UK a lot, but you also want some diversification, this could be a good way to get some decent dividend yield and some value companies into an ETF that you could hold for a while. And here's the performance of EEI. Not bad at 10.5% over five years. Um, excluding dividends, though, is negative, although the performance is better than IUKD. This is the Wisdom Tree Emerging Markets Dividend ETF, DEM. The index is comprised of high-yielding companies from emerging markets, but it filters them according to quality factors and momentum. So that helps to get better companies into the top 10 holdings and we've got the list there interestingly enough in terms of sectors we've got it at number one which does seem a bit odd um, financials there at number two in terms of the country weightings we've got Ch taiwan at number one china number two then brazil uh, it also has to meet esg criteria as well which might help filter out some of the slightly more dubious businesses so overall, I quite like the filtering that Wisdom Tree are doing to dividend companies in emerging markets to get a better overall fund. The Morningstar Developed Markets Large Cap Dividend Leaders Index is an ETF that's much more like a solid global fund. It's got 100 holdings, not too diversified, P ratio about nine, price to book. 1.1 average market cap 64 billion so it's large companies that are pretty solid that pay decent dividends not necessarily dividends that grow year on year though the country breakdown not too much weighting to the us so it's great if you have a value bias to your portfolio and you'd like a five percent yield here's some sector statistics on the fund heavily weighted towards banks, which is a bit of a shame. And then some other morning star data here, which is reasonable, but I'm not always sure how accurate it is looking at things like profitability and growth and giving it weightings. And then also the, the wide moat, which is things like R&D and brands and uh, competitiveness. Here's the total return performance of the morning star dividend leaders ETF. TDGB, and it's pretty impressive, 46% over five years. And if we take off the dividends, 16%. So the underlying fund is doing well, and then you're getting this dividend kicker on the top, which is great. To research the dividend history of an ETF, I just go to the tab dividends in the Just ETF website, and it pulls up the dividend history here. We can see dividends are paid quarterly and that the annual amounts are these numbers here, and then the annual yield. So although the dividend yield is variable because it's just passing on the dividends from the underlying companies it invests in, it started out about 5%, got hit by the coronavirus crash, and then has recovered now back up to the 5% again. So if you're looking to take a 4% income from this ETF, you could do it providing you had enough of a reserve just to cover you for the lean years, which will happen from time to time. So an interesting twist on value investing is to say that I would require a dividend yield to compensate me while I'm holding companies with single digit PE ratios on average, whilst I'm waiting for value to return to these companies such that I can make a capital gain. And then essentially I've got the best of both worlds. I've got downside protection, possibility of prices rising, and a dividend yield. Here's a table featuring all the ETFs I've covered, sorting by dividend yield descending. The Vanek Morningstar Developed Market Dividend Leaders, that's the best total returns. 
and the second best is the X Trackers Global Select Dividend 100. And those are probably the two that I'd look at in a bit more detail because they've got that global balance and probably aren't as risky or niche as some of the other ETFs. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a like, let me know your comments, and you can go to my website www.ianshadrack.com/portfolio-coaching if you want to learn more about some of my services.